back to the Go Family Network, and today it's another huge tour. It's gonna be a long one as always, but I got you back. We're gonna put in the description a timestamp. That means you can actually go and if you don't really want to see this strawberry planter that's behind us, tower that's behind us, then you can skip ahead. If you don't want to see any of our raised containers and you just want to see the food forest, look in the description, skip ahead, skip ahead to the orchard, skip ahead to the high tunnel, just go where you want to go. Uh, and we're going to take our time. We're going to walk through this thing and not just we're going to walk through it, but today we're actually going to pick some stuff that's ripening, show you some stuff that we got growing. Uh, if you haven't seen us before, please take time and think about sticking around. Subscribe today. Hit that notification bell. And I promise you might just stick around for the rest of the 2020 growing season. So what we're going to do is we're going to get started. And as always, we bring the kids out to hang out with us Hello. and everybody. Everybody's out. All seven of them. Wow. That's a lot of kids, sir. <laughs> uh, but we're gonna start here. I'm gonna show you some of their favorites in the garden, which is all berries usually. That's why you'll probably never see us do a, a strawberry video where we have uh, ripe strawberries. That's about the best you're gonna get is the blushing strawberries when they're red. The kids eat them during the morning times, but we do have some blueberries that are ripening and we're gonna show you the pickle leaves. So let's get started with the strawberry planter. All right, so this is our strawberry planter. You can eat the whole thing. Uh, and basically, we got a few videos on what we did and how we did it. And it's actually, it's actually coming along as the helicopters pass over our head. Actually coming along quite well. Coming down this little alleyway and Fiona right now is at our famous pickle leaves and people ask us about these a little bit uh, wondering what are they and it's just uh, French yeah sorrel. French sorrel that's all they are it got this little pickly taste uh, kind of salty mm -hmm. what else would you say salady and it doesn't really boat during the heat of the summer like your regular, uh, I see. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> like pickle your regular. Leaves. Yeah, so we call them pickle leaves. Uh, it's real, look at Shia's face. They're real soury. But after you've been outside for a while, it's really, uh, it makes you want to keep eating it. Just like a sour, sour pickle, right? Yep. I'll get me some later uh let's move on start showing what we got going on here uh moringa up here we have our comfrey mixed in with our pomegranate that's not fruiting or flowering yet um all of our cuttings from our elderberries from last year got a little vining plant just trying to see how much is this going to grow actually in this container. Persian lime. We got that bay tree. You can see it. Looking really good. Putting off a lot of good green growth. More comfrey that we actually dug up. Uh, that's our bay cutting. Hopefully we can get that thing to fruit out. This the one that really yeah, like this one. Uh, this is a successful cutting from that bay tree that you're looking at that's right there behind it. Uh, another moringa. Everything on this, the majority of this stuff is actually just all from seeds. So all of the low quads are from seeds. Uh, oh, seeds are cuttings. The mulberry is from a cutting. The fig is from a cutting somebody actually sent us. And the pots are actually some seeds that Bells is trying to grow. Um, right here what we have is blueberries. So kids love the blueberries. I rarely get a chance to get some. They generally come out and get all the blueberries that you can get. So 
Uh, we've been trying to hold off from getting these just for the sake of the video, but for the most part, when the kids come out in the morning, they're going to go ahead on and get most of the blueberries that we have. While they're doing that, these are the woods from the tree that actually fell down back there to the back that hit our little high tunnel. Actually, what we managed to do was make something good out of it. Uh, so whenever you got a tree that's down, good thing about having acreage and property is when you have a down tree, you can actually use that wood. So you got a little, I mean, we've been using electric chainsaw, so you don't need no big heavy duty chainsaw. And that's enough wood for us and for mom. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn around and we're going to start up at our, I think we're going to go up to our first it's to our first pickles or uh, cucumbers that's probably soon to be pickles and then we're gonna make our way to all our raised beds so stick with us we're moving all right so here we are hanging out with some of our burpless cucumbers that we're gonna pick trying to pick all of this stuff today that way we can actually make us a little cucumber salad or we can juice it like I would like. So while Bev's is picking those, I'll show you the Meyer lemon that we have. While she's under there. They're gonna do quite well. This is their second year in the ground. Uh, so it is doing an amazing job. You wanna pick that one? <laughs> So we're gonna keep them coming. Say, so pick up the pace, ma'am. Pick up the pace. Should I pick, pick that one? Yeah. Always try to get those that are on the ground you before. Take, you try? I don't want her to really use those cutters. She might try to use them when we're not here. And that'll be a disaster. <laughs> All right, I'll carry this. And we'll. We got anything else? Oh, so we got some that are still coming, still growing. Let oh, those go one. for a little bit. This one already yeah. long. That one's getting long. And we got one ripe tomato. You can get that, Ari. What? You want a tomato? Oh, wow. yeah. Tomato, tomato. Matisse, matisse. Yay! Mm. That's, that's yummy. Yeah, she likes tomatoes. Uh, next thing, where we at? Is we gonna stop? Or you wanna show everybody? Say, look what I got! Look what I got! I got that. <laughs> uh, this is our seed starting table. Um, we have some bush cucumbers, zinnias, corn, watermelon, zucchinis coming up. Still waiting on some other stuff to come up. Yep. Um, Bell's moringa, as always. She's always growing some moringa. We got papaya and some tomatoes. Just mango. little stuff. Mango that she actually got to come from seed. Right there. And we got another one she's trying to start right there. Uh, some stuff that we've actually already put inside the beds. That's really cool. So let's move on. This is pretty sunflower. Yeah. Our Sunfinity Sunflower. <laughs> really cool I like that I like these little things because you can grow them in pots actually bought one to my mom's for Mother's, Mother's Day, Day which was good uh, so this is our root crop bed and in this bed we actually have asparagus we actually put some green beans on the side to run up this fence line right here uh, we have ginger and turmeric that's coming up chives and we got those Chinese chives that are in there. So that's this bed. In a few months, this bed is gonna be a whole lot better because a lot of the ginger and turmeric that's in there, could you believe it, hasn't sprouted up yet. So we're still waiting on them. Uh, here we go. Bev's bitter melon bed. The invasive spinach. Yeah, so we got that Malabar spinach coming up everywhere. Um, but I was looking 
and I saw a lot of these little flowers coming out on Bev's bitter melon. Bitter melon is, I would say, is Bev's breakfast. Uh, what you would say? Breakfast, vegetable, bitter melon, and eggs, stuff like that. I like it a little bit, not much. Oh, look, one has opened up on us, too. Let's show you that. On top of the so that one is actually opened. And this one got a fruit already. Look. Yeah, and we got a little small bit of melon coming out, which is cool. Uh, we have bananas that we haven't planted out yet. Um, also, we have more cucumbers that we need to harvest. Uh, so while Bells is harvesting these babies, the little cukes. And you can look at them, man. That's look at the size of that thing. You know this. Uh, mm. It's like a store bought. So this is the market moor. I guess they call them market moor because it actually looks like the market. It looks like the cucumbers that are at the store. Um, so she's gonna get some of those. Now I'm looking at these spotted. A lot of people always own oh, one stucker. We're not really having a problem. Like it's not. I think the good thing about having them separate, we're growing them on the edges. Uh, you can get that one down there too. On the edges of the beds. The good thing about them is it can't transfer that disease over to the next one. So it's growing well. You can look at that. It's actually growing quite well. Um, giving off crazy, crazy. Uh, abundance but we just ate cucumbers. and Bells was just eating cucumbers uh, next to that take one of those off take that big one off and we're gonna show you this is called Who's so spicy smell though but it's not it's the sweet this is a giant Marconi's you want me to taste it yeah you no know, take it off I don't want you to you want to bite it you can bite it mm -hmm. <laughs> So it's just like a sweet bell pepper. It's called giant Marconis. We do have a sign somewhere down there, up in the middle, I believe, uh, that shows. And this shows you, let me see if this is it. Yeah. So this actually just shows you, let me bring that into focus. It's a sweet pepper. It's called giant Marconi. You can take it green or you can wait till it gets red. I like them. They're real prolific. Harvest well. Uh, we do have. Yeah, look at that. Let you see that. Finally starting to get some color on those tomatoes under there. And we have them throughout. She took it. She took it. She took it. And we have it throughout the uh, garden on this bush variety. And that's kind of all we're growing. But look. Look at that though. Something got to one of them. Some actually got to two of them. Because I took one off. Um, something that I already ate yeah. on that one. So, it's cool. They're going to get to some of them. Don't worry about it. Just keep growing. Uh, these are actually large cayennes. These are going to turn red. That is pretty spicy. But, yeah. This is going to be a spicy variety. But look how they're so, so, so beautiful. Look at this. filled up. I don't want to spend too much time, but I see those worms up in there too. Right by this spider. You should be taking care of those worms for me. But you're staying on my property, but you're not taking care of those worms for me though. Why, why, why? Uh, more tomatoes starting to blush. I can see it right there. It's starting to blush. Which is real cool. Look at this. We got something that's growing in there. Oh. Got one that's actually growing inside of there. Ready to grow. Ready to grow. I think this is like the most beautiful part of this bed. Is when you pass by, you actually, not, not do you just see all of these long peppers. You see this beautiful jalapeno. That's, I mean, stacked from top to bottom. And we'll probably come on 
and get some of those later on. So let's move on. And this is Cayenne. Look at my little buddies up in there. Hello, friend. Hello. That's who takes care of all of our bugs. We have so many lizards here. They actually take care of mostly all of our bugs for us. Uh, let me show you. This bed is going to be our cassava bed. All cassava has been planted and it's going to start uh, coming up pretty soon. This is actually an eggplant. We got two eggplants in here. Another, uh, this is from seed, so I can't remember what it is, but it's starting to put on lots of tomatoes. So we'll see what it is once it actually fruits, huh? Yep. Not ready yet. Not ready, not ready yet, not ready yet. We probably got some over here that's ready. Come over here. Come um, over here. This is Amanda's garden. Voila. This is Amanda's garden. Uh, this is the first bed we planted. Uh, husky reds. We have this comfrey here, which is growing wild. But look at that. Husky reds, they call them. But if you can pull one of those off and show them. But it's actually ripening orange. Like that's the dark as it gets. <laughs> and the babies actually love eating them. Right? Eating She's eating peppers right now. <laughs> uh, coming from this side. I see something. Look at that. Look at that suckers up in that eating. Oh, there's a fat one. Oh, yeah. Get you. Eat, eat, eat. But I'll get you. I won't forget about them. Uh, Bev's has some egg wings. Eggplants. They had a lot of fruit on the other one. Flowers of the eggplants all over. Eggplants coming. Husky red on that side. Doing well. Yeah. This More one. eggplants. Amanda's garden is going to be loaded in a few weeks. And of course, all of those better bush tomatoes. Just all the way up. It's actually magnificent to see the amount of production that a little indeterminate variety. You can see how tall they are to say they're indeterminate. They get really, really tall, but really, really full at the same time. You can actually look in there and see that. You gotta take that off. Um, and on the end of Amanda's garden, gotta harvest some of these. See a little bug damage on the leaves. Get a little diatomaceous earth or maybe do a little uh, a little spraying with some citrus oil or neem oil. Mm, Look at that. Another good thick one. Full of juice, what full of water content. Yeah. We'll get that one. Show them to get this one. It's not supposed to. Not ready yet. No, that one's not ready. Okay. <laughs> so we're getting there. We're getting there. Let's keep moving. Uh, next bed, this cucumber plant isn't doing as great as the rest of them, but I think it's because of the zucchinis are just taking so much of the power away from being so huge. I'm going to back up so I can let you see how huge this zucchini plant is. Crazy, crazy huge. Uh, we have been getting some zucchinis off of it. Um, right now it looks like it's at a slowdown. But we got squash that's ready. So uh, this is about three or four squash plants here. I'm gonna let Bev's harvest those. Um, inside of that, we actually have some a bunch of banana peppers we're gonna have to get as well. Uh, so you look in there. I'm not that What? You can see plants on top of plants on top of plants. And we'll get that up in there. We got some up in there as well that hasn't been pollinated as well. And we'll have to get those as well uh, out of there. But we're not going to do that right now. We're just going to harvest what we can harvest. 
and we're gonna keep moving so while she's doing that I'll let you see that we have she's not gonna be able to get all of these either uh, banana peppers you can see all the flowers on them what's been keeping the black uh, what we call those little black ants off of these and you can see one of them right here if I can if he's gonna show his face but we got like some little black ants diatomaceous are these things kind of like a like closed pollination to me so I don't really see much bees come and mess with them um, so to keep the ants off the jalapenos and uh, banana peppers diatomaceous earth right around I'm gonna show you right around the base of them stop those ants from crawling up forming those aphids on you um, and we have a soon to be beautiful sunflower right in the midst of it all uh, which is cool I see you baby I see you mm-hmm uh, while Bev's is doing that getting some of those I'll go to the next bed which is Natalia's bed and show you another cucumber vine we have coming up and this seems to be I believe this is going to be a, a pickle and cucumber type you can see that I believe that's going to be a pickling type. So we got pickling cucumbers, regular cucumbers, an eggplant right here in the middle. And right here we have actually another cucumber that's coming up. And I tell you all the time, I, this is what you got to be careful of. Uh, actually got stuck inside the fence in two, three days. You didn't catch it. One side was too big to pull through and it's stuck right there. I'll wait till it gets big enough to harvest and I'll just break it out. And we got another one up in there. But look at these beets that's ready to come out. Let me show you that. While we're taking these beets out, we have okra coming right behind them. All along right there. We did plant corn the last time. You can leave that one. We'll get it later. We did plant corn the last time. They didn't come up, so we had to plant the okra. So basically that's what we had to do. Right here, not seeing any flowering on the pear tree, but what we did was got the chickens to actually come in and clean up this little cage. And I think this is where we're gonna end up planting our corn since we got some to germinate. We actually put some corn here uh, and this Merlintone vine here, if you can see it. This one and this one, we're actually gonna put around here, see if we can get it to grow up and cover, cover this whole little eyesore that we've left right here trying to find some workability for it um, that's it pear tree that's the actual raised bed garden that's in our backyard everything that we have that way and now here we go passing our banana square actually what we did here on our way to the high tunnel was actually had to put in one I took out one that was right here it wasn't making it I actually put another one that we had uh, potted up through the winter um, so now we have a nice look hopefully with that cold that we just got that didn't slow them down too much hopefully with the heat kicking back up we'll be able to basically run the tables again and get us some bananas uh, we'll stop right here on the outside and show you everything that's fruiting, flowering, half fruited, starting with this Tabasco. Bells love these. Nice and hot. I just like making the little pepper sauce, but Beverly actually eats with them. Uh, more blueberries that hasn't started turning on us. Persimmon, fig, hibiscus. My baby. Now I eat with these. These are the ghost peppers these are three years old we actually been keeping them for the last three years we, we started in ground actually moved them to the pot uh, during one winter season and we just put it inside the high tunnel and it actually 
did well. Uh, banana and oregano over here. Basically, we got key lime, thornless key lime. You gotta get the big ones. Okay, which I'm Let's not see. good enough. Let's get up here. Get the meat ones. Go up. There we go. So, got some thornless key limes. Another one of my favorites. Ghost peppers. Ghost peppers. These are the habanero peppers, and this so is cute. the <laughs> this is the Australia thin peach, uh, not peach plum. Here, I don't know what this is. Mulberry cutting, and this is what we've actually tried to do here. I'm going to show you right down here. We've actually tried to grow us. A few potatoes in just a regular one gallon pot so we'll do a video on that to see does it actually have enough soil to actually make some good uh, good potatoes uh, so here we go we are at the entrance of the high tunnel I'm gonna take you all the way to the back and then we're gonna work our way back this way um, actually dug up those bananas put them in the front so if you want to catch that front yard orchard you can you'll be able to see that let me go back here I didn't show you this on the last garden tour or property tour but back here is something I've been working on but not had enough time to get back here on because it's so far back at the end of the property which is way at the back and what you see here is we're gonna try to start growing some muscadines and grapes on the trellis so we're just starting we put them in about a year ago and they're starting to grow up on their own so I really got to get out here and put some kind of trellis system on them um, if not it's gonna all be in vain but they do or they get no attention back here besides me cutting the grass and they're still alive so which is good for me win for me uh, here we go I'm coming Ari here we go we made it back um, back at the back we still have Bell's pepper that's actually putting on Tabasco and here are the bush beans here are the bush beans. Hello. Coming in. Uh, so we got bush beans that we're going to get, we're going to start harvesting. Kind of held off harvesting those to kind of show you all how they actually grow. What I think we should have did here was planted these a little bit more densely. I took the bush idea that it would have bushed out more than they did even though they are doing well they haven't bushed out like i thought they would bush but since this is our first year growing them i really didn't know uh so next time what i'm gonna do is i'm probably gonna do the one or maybe two inch spacing on these to try to get them a little bit more fuller and i think we're still gonna plant some more of these so i got about two huge bags of them so what i'm gonna do is probably come out here and plan anyway and just see what they do um, everything back here I've actually taken my time and not pushed them or fertilized them as hard as maybe I should uh, because I really didn't want everything basically fruiting at the same time so I mean kind of a little light on the fertilization and you can see that the things are growing a little bit slower back here not just because it was planted later but just because I haven't been really caring for it holding it hard or watering it hard as I should 
Uh, right here was the only spot in the whole high tunnel where we had some sort of deficiency. I did a little uh, fish emulsion. I did a little Epsom salt. Um, it kind of greened them up a little bit. If you can see right here, it kind of greened them up a little bit. But I think they were already too far gone to where, hey, I'm going to plant some more. That's all I can tell you. If it doesn't work, plant some more. If it doesn't work, plant some more. Uh, peppers are doing good. I want to show you why, looking at these little bit of peppers, uh, these are Big Bertha sweet peppers, and it's supposed to be a huge plant. The reason why with the high tunnel this doesn't really alarm me is because right over here I'm going to show you that these peppers can last so long in the high tunnel. Um, looking at that, these are three year peppers. And look at that. You never have to take them out if you don't want to. And while everybody else is, is growing and waiting on peppers actually because the plant is actually fully mature when the spring comes back it just starts pushing out flowers uh, like crazy and peppers like crazy so we haven't still haven't planted much on this side Bells has seen some juke coming up I put in a few tomato plants but we still got more to actually got enough for us for to eat tonight yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's see where we at so far, and let's keep on moving. Not gonna get any eggs, even though we're going by the chicken cage. Uh, we can grab some of these bell peppers off of here, so folks can see the size of the peppers. Look how she just let my stuff fall on the ground. Uh, that's just diatomaceous herb that had to put on the plant because these little ants go crazy if you don't keep them in check. Uh, more right here on this plant over. Look how loaded this plant is with bell peppers. Hold it. <laughs> I'll hold it. She has so much in her hand right now. Uh, we can let these get some more size on them. But I mean, everywhere I'm putting my hand is, is peppers. See that everywhere is more peppers, more peppers, and we haven't planted this but two years ago. Uh, so that's how that's looking. Moringa is yellowing. I think it's because we got so much rain the other day. It was just like yeah. rained out. Yeah. Rained out. Yeah, I said it. Uh, over here is celery. We actually have more celery at the front that I'm going to bring back here and transplant here. Uh, Zucchini, this was zucchini, zucchini, zucchini. Uh, I think I only seen maybe one in there. There it go down there. Let's see. So one, two, three, and one of them is, you can tell it hasn't been pollinated right, so it's starting to yellow. Looks like a little end rod on them. These, same thing as well. Right there you can see wasn't pollinated, and I'm not doing any hand pollination. Uh, this, I'm going to show you, is our only indeterminates on the property and this is I think Cherokee purple and this thing to say I don't really do much this thing is doing really well and you can see down there the thing I like about tomatoes is you can take them at any time and just let them ripen up inside or you can leave them on the vine and pray nothing gets to them uh, so all I did was put some tomato string and tied it up to the top and that's that on all of these they're just starting to really do well the reason why I don't like to deal with indeterminates because as the property grows and gets bigger I have less time to do care and maintenance on them so I still had to come back here and do a lot of cutting get those dead leaves off especially toward the bottom as you can see had to take all that off and it takes more time so just takes more time let's check out these bush cucumbers Bell's little bag skit it's getting a little full <laughs> uh, but I'll let you see these 
These look like uh, Bells was talking. These look like some nice pickling sized cucumbers. They got the tweeny twins. You got twins on top of twins. Go ahead and take them off. To take twins off? <laughs> yeah, take them twins out of there. This is a little compact bush. You got to be careful that you don't oh. cut. Get out of there, you little roly poly. You got to be careful that you don't cut. Uh, you got the baby. <laughs> Take this one out. Yeah. Too. Cut the vine, they're so compact. How about the twin? Yeah, you can take it off. The more you take off, the better. Give that vine a big break. Oh, look at that one. It is the pickling because all this one is on the ground. Take this one off. Just looks one. nice. Looks nice. Looks nice. Looks nice, man. <laughs> so those are nice. If we got more, we'll come back. We don't want to bore y'all with a crazy harvest video because we're supposed to be doing a garden tour. So uh, this banana actually, we had those by it. And like I was saying, you're going to see where I actually put them. Actually, so now they got more energy to push out to just itself. So took up the pups or the suckers that was around it. And we got two more coming up right behind those. Uh, so we'll keep that as one single stalk and hopefully we can fertilize and get more energy just to that one and that will cause it to actually I guess have more energy push out that bunch of bananas that we're looking for before it outgrows the whole high tunnel uh, so next what we're gonna take a look at is look at this little look at this little I was gonna get you sitting down <laughs> Yeah, I was going to get her sitting down on a job. Uh, so, that's really getting full. I don't think we even have anything else besides the eggs that actually that's ready to harvest. Uh, so, you can kind of look at what we've got today. Pretty much cucumbers, beets, squash, beans, and some beans so far today. Uh, so, you can put that down. I don't want you to have to just carry that and carry that. Uh, heading on over to our watermelon mound looking good from the side looking at the sunflowers that are coming up actually planted a lot of sunflowers but look like only about 10 maybe came up um, let me walk around the side show you these are all melons and cantaloupes on the back side all these were actually transplants so none of these we actually grew from seed but as I look in there I can see a lot of uh, a lot of flowers. Hopefully, a lot of them have been pollinated. Fruits are on them going. And our own watermelons. We always grow our own watermelons from seed. So, anytime you see a watermelon on our property, nine times out of ten, ten times out of ten, it's ours. Uh, so nothing to talk about yet but maybe in the next month or so gonna have a lot going on with this baby look at that little thing it's starting to grow it's gonna grow fast so starting to grow uh, here we are with our little mobile chicken tractor whatever you call it uh, what else do I want to show that's basically just its own wheels that's how we protect keep that little block around the wheel so nothing can get up under there on both sides we're actually all three sides and that's how we actually keep them nice and protected um, still haven't finished this ch this little uh, chicken extension here but you can see all the sunflowers that are coming up around here I actually planted this as a perimeter around our chicken extension and we do have figs. yeah some figs that are coming up you can see I actually wanted to have everywhere you see those little green sticks uh, Mr. Shake Snyder gave us some fig cuttings but I think only about so far about three of them have actually taken so still good for us we didn't have that to start with and that's basically how it's looking what you think it's growing it's getting there it's getting there not fully 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 there 
uh, but it's getting there. So, and we'll check those eggs and all that stuff a little bit later. Here we are at the food forest. Uh, I want to make a video about this thing. I've actually seen more growth in the food forest during the fall than I saw in the spring. Um, but this is a red navel. Looks like it, hopefully it doesn't drop the fruit. Let me get in there. Hopefully it doesn't drop the fruit. We'll probably get about five good fruits off of this thing. Um, know it's going to be protected. Uh, so in here we have grapefruit, tangerines, uh, blueberries here that didn't do anything this year. Just put them in. Everything here is first year. Everything here besides these two uh, citrus, this grapefruit and that Meyer lemon that's right over here. Everything else is first year. Uh, pineapple sage is putting on flowers. Uh, the little garden is looking okay. Starting to see it uh, flowering a little bit right down here. Getting a couple of fruits on. Tomato is a little bit behind. I'm thinking because it's just not enough sun here to actually, I don't know, make it do what it wants to do. Um, Meyer lemon holding on. That's the improved Meyer lemon. I think I had some on this tangerine. Not sure, but I think when it was too, too, too windy, it knocked off a lot of them. But there you go. A few we'll get this year. Um, the what we got from that from that place that we bought. The raspberry and uh, what's the other one? Goji berry isn't really doing much. I can, I don't know if it's, they must need real, real, real full sun. So I don't think we got that. Look at that. We can take those off of there. So blueberries look like they may be able to hold their own. Once again, this is first year here. So we're not looking for much here. She missed it. <laughs> uh, but the uh, the comfrey is looking good back here I actually did tell y'all about that little baby passion fruit is growing super slow but I'm hoping that it doesn't die during the winter time so I'm gonna give it time to actually grow and do its thing I was like, I'm going to take that thing out of there and move it somewhere in full sun. But I'm going to hold true to the experiment and I'm not moving that thing. Uh, I'm going to let it do what it's doing. i um, got a lot of little flowers in here. This is my little gardening part coming out. We're starting to put in some flowers. These are all lilies that haven't bloomed yet. So looking to see them bloom as well. So here is our food forest so far if you're wondering what that is over there that's our little burn pot last month you can remember we had limbs and all kind of stuff up there from when we actually took out the trees we finally burned them for the ash and that's what that is so um it's looking good i just got to keep reminding myself it's first year it's under evergreen tree i'm hoping for the best hoping that this thing do what it's supposed to do. So where are we going next? We're going to the orchard. We're going to the orchard. Looks good? I'm gonna show you the walk up. Whenever I'm walking from the back back here, coming around the back of the house, this is my new scenery of coming to the orchard by putting up those beautiful uh, banana plants or trees. It looks so tropical out here. As you guys get closer because you're on this wide lens, I can already see it, but it's gonna take a while for y'all to see how beautiful this thing is out here. Um, everything has been planted. The mung beans, the okra, the squash. I think we got a little, maybe about six more spaces on these two rows right here to put in maybe some watermelon or some, uh, 
What's my squash? My squash that I like to put in. Uh, what, butternut? The butternut squash, yeah. So, looking really good. Looking really good. Tomatoes. Uh oh, yep. Got some eating up in there. Bev's is looking at. She gets fascinated with the worms. Just like the children, when they see a worm, that's it for the video. Uh, okra is growing up. Starting to put on some size. We just transplanted those a few weeks ago. Actually, after the last video, Bell's mung beans are doing amazing. If you can remember. Oh yeah, and Bell's has the loofah that she's gonna put. I have to put a trellis out here, right over there behind her. Right here, I gotta put a trellis over there. Uh, squash is doing good, amazing. And I'll let you see the okra. We just planted this, what, two weeks ago? Maybe a week and a half, if that. A week. Um, a week. Mm -hmm. And this is where we got all that beautiful stuff. Um, so let's look at the trees. Got an apple actually coming in. I remember when I first started planting these, I'm like, I don't never see many apple trees in Louisiana. So must not can grow too well and they're actually doing okay this is like our second year yep. in the ground last year when we planted it it actually had some on there and this year it has some on there uh so let's go check out the fuyu persimmon and we're getting hopefully this thing holds on let me see if i can show you how it looks hopefully it holds on and doesn't fruit drop on us because all we got is about three on this tree I think then we got that one there then we got this one and I think somewhere else I'm not sure or maybe we only got two now it dropped but we'll show you the other one that we got uh, actually got some uh, banana I actually just planted that one this week I planted the other one last week um, and this is our we call it Filipina squash, right? Yeah, I thought it was like a bushy zucchini, but it's finally starting to, you can see it, it's finally starting to run. So we got the black paper down, at least to keep the grass away from the root ball where we can water it a little bit better, um, but should be pretty good. Uh, what else we got? We got another apple there. This is our little grafted citrus. This I think this is supposed to be our grapefruit, and this is the satsuma doing well together. I don't know which one is. Another apple. First year it actually flowered, so we know we probably wasn't gonna get any fruits. Um, got these little aphid things everywhere. We gotta keep spraying them off just about every day and they come right back. Uh, so we got to start with on the orchard, we got three apple trees on the front. And then we have our persimmon on the end. Uh, this is a kumquat with the comfrey at the bottom. We got a calamansit. Calamansit. Uh, uh, calamandine. And we really don't know, we thinking that's the calamandine, but we don't know if it's either that one or the tangerine, cause I had grafted two, but I didn't label the graft, so. But I'm thinking that's the calamandine. And also over here we got another fuyu, cause we bought two. And this one has more fruit on it than the other one so uh, hopefully this one if it tends to hold at least some of the fruit and i'm gonna uh, get something to kind of uh kind of brace this thing up a little bit because it's kind of leaning this way probably reaching for the sun uh -oh. i see one has fell out over here that, thing is that was here and it fell out because i see it on the ground so a little fruit drop but we only really thinking it's gonna hold on to maybe one or two of them. Another one fell out. Yeah. So hopefully it holds on to at least one or two. That's what we're hoping for. 
think it's gonna be good. Celeste Fig coming back. Um, Mihu Satsuma. No fruits on it this year. It had a it had a rough winter because I I did some experimenting with this thing. Uh, I covered it a different way that I didn't cover the rest of them. Just trying something for when it really, really gets cold and I'm going to have to protect it. it. It saved it, but it didn't help it because it didn't let any sun come through. So I'm going to kind of change that up just a little bit. And hopefully we get a better year next year. Um, this is our air layer cutting. I actually finally put in the ground this year. And look at the figs on it. I like the way it's shaped and everything. So kind of liking this fig. <laughs> Liking where it is, liking everything about it. It's real nice, and the comfrey is underneath. So all you gotta do is take your comfrey and break it off, then just lay it down. Get you another one. They're gonna just keep coming back over and over, and that's how we kind of keep that grass, keep that grass down. Uh, come on back. This is Satsuma. <laughs> but this one is loaded. This one is loaded down. This one has Satsumas everywhere on this one. Uh, this one has done the best with the snows we've had, with the colds we've had. This one has done by far the best. So we're looking for at least a good harvest out of these, maybe about 20 or so Satsumas. I think that's the Armstrong. I'm not sure. Well, how many citrus trees we had? No, for this one. Oh, hmm. Banana tree. Doing do good. It's going to do good. Hoping that it does well in that spot. Uh, hopefully, even fruits this year. So, hoping for the best. Let's go check out our front raised beds. Uh, this is about time to come out. Uh, I don't know what to say. What we did wrong. Maybe it's not enough sun. Maybe too much sun, maybe not enough uh, fertilizing, but I'm gonna show you how, I mean the root systems are there, but, but the growth isn't there. And you can see right here, I did the method where you actually like pull the stuff away from it, pull the dirt away from it. But once again, I mean the roots are there, but didn't get, you wanna hold it, didn't get, what we were looking for on those so we're going to probably eventually pull those out because we got this melon that's in and we're going to let this melon kind of take over this bed maybe even put in uh that's a that's loofah looks like a loofah but i thought it was a uh watermelon, watermelon. but that's loofah yeah <laughs> your fault uh, <laughs> uh, so, so once again, more blueberries out to the front, and they're actually putting on quite well. Starting, finally, finally starting to get some color on them. Sun keep asking, "Mommy, yeah. blueberry done? Are they ready? They ready? They ready? Finally, starting to get that that color that we're looking for. And like I say, the birds, the birds generally won't get these." because the kids as soon as they start to uh, ripen the kids actually go for them before the birds can even see them so pretty good sweet potato bed with our giant yeah giant green onion so glad that it's going to see that way I'm gonna be able to get some seeds off of this the biggest green onion I ever seen in my life so, I guess it's some kind of giant variety. Um, but like I said, we got everything here is basically gonna be the running thing. Yeah. We want this. I'm eating. Uh, everything is gonna be sweet wow. potatoes. I've never seen that. Sweet potato we just want our flower. sweet potatoes to just run, run, run. It may not be the flower of the it sweet is potato. The flower. Let's see. 100%. Already early? Yes. I'm used to seeing them kind of early for them. Oh, we do got a flower up in there. Right there, it's gonna open up. So that's cool. We know that they're healthy and running, so we're liking that. 
gonna be a bed full of sweet potatoes and probably after this year from the way this bed is looking you can look here it's probably time to replace this bed anyway so it'll be good for us to kind of break up getting that sweet potatoes kind of digging in there getting those sweet potatoes out of there and replacing the bed um actually we got bush okra over here and we got watermelons that i went ahead on and pulled right here or put right here as we pulled all the carrots out we did that about two weeks ago pulled all those carrots out the last of the broccoli i got one small head there celery. and one small head there the celery we actually i'm gonna pull that celery and bring it to the high tunnel because if i leave it out here the sun and the heat is going to get it anyway so it doesn't like the sun yeah it doesn't like that much heat and sunfinity is coming up yeah sunfinity don't forget to save your seeds sorry out there don't forget to save those seeds so we actually been cutting off you can see right here actually cut a head off so i cut off about three heads so far so waiting for these seeds to kind of dry a little bit more and we're going to cut those seeds so that way for the fall we'll have all of our romaine salad uh last thing and as always so this is the last of it the last of the tour they're not let me not say that word. They're still alive. <laughs> Put it that way. They're still alive. Uh, what a difference a month makes. I keep saying that every month. As I look at our old garden tours. Turn it around. As I look at our old garden tours and I see the growth. Like looking at that front yard garden last month and looking at it this month. It's totally, totally, totally uh the growth is has been so good and everything has made it so far except for one tomato plant um everything else has been a blessing to us um to watch to come out water dots makes his earth little nemo sprays here and there uh probably fertilized once since last last tour yeah if that maybe i think i did some of the stuff i did some of the stuff i didn't um as you know if you follow our channel we're a little bit uh slight or lack of hand when it comes to fertilizing so we don't fertilize as much as maybe the next gardener or, or as maybe we should um but if i got organic fertilizer i use it if i don't i just water and try to plant more i figured if you plant more plants and with less fertilizing each plant produces a little bit less but the seed costs uh, less than the fertilizer so we just plant a little bit more and space it out a little bit and hopefully we get a little bit better production than using a lot of fertilizer uh, so that's it if you made it through the whole video then poof you did it if you skipped around and then came to the outro to hear me talk then all together even better because all i'm doing at the end of this video is going to just tell you that we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for liking our video pressing the thumbs up button subscribing to the channel uh doing all that stuff that actually gives us a little bit of money that allows us to go out and buy more stuff for the garden more stuff for the family more stuff to put back more soil all that good stuff so um, I want to say thank you and thank everybody for watching and that's it for the video and as always until next month June 15th thank you for watching and grow grow grow, grow. peace <laughs>